Welcome to Taiwan Report News Brief, news and analysis from Taiwan. I'm Donovan Smith. Up today on the show, the Canadian foreign minister snubs Taiwan twice. Paraguay holds a vote on dumping ties with Taiwan. Hang Guoyu loses on appeal. The KMT is slumping in the polls with their worst showing ever, while the DPP and the Tsai administration are riding high. The government is continuing to keep the cash spigot open and much, much more. This is a juicy, juicy, juicy show, so be sure to stick around. But of course, up first, coronavirus updates. Taiwan confirmed no new cases of COVID-19 on Friday, keeping the total at 440. Taiwan's Ministry of Health and Welfare has partnered with Facebook on a service that is aimed at pri- providing timely and reliable information on COVID-19. A rapid antibody test kit for COVID-19 developed by a local biomedical company that can deliver results in just 10 minutes has passed cl- clinical trials and is ready for mass production. The method of testing is similar to that of a pregnancy test, which uses two red lines to indicate results. The test boasts 100% sensitivity and 95% specificity, according to the company. According to the Ministry of Finance, Taiwan's exports for April stood at 25.24 billion, down 1.3% from a year earlier, following a year-on-year decline of 0.6% in March. On a month-on-month basis, the country's outbound sales also dropped 10.7%, according to the data. In April, Taiwan's imports fell 9.9% from a year earlier to $22.97 billion, with a trade surplus of $2.27 billion U.S., down $440 million from a year earlier. The Industrial Development Bureau has approved 756 of 1,224 applications from companies seeking government subsidies due to the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, it said. Quote, applications are still pouring in and we are receiving an average of 100 applications per day, said the IDB Director General. Under the program, companies with 50% annual decline in sales can receive wage subsidies of up to 40% per employee to a maximum of 20,000 NT, as well as a one-time injection of working capital calculated based on 10,000 NT per employee. In related news, the legislative UN has given final approval to 150 billion NT dollars special budget to finance measures to support the economy. The funding will go to subsidies for payroll and operating expenses and utilities that affected companies, credit guarantees and interest subsidies, grants for lower income households and programs to spur consumer spending. Meanwhile, Premier Su Tsang yesterday apologized and promised improvements after chaotic scenes outside of local government offices on Wednesday as uninsured workers waited in long lines to apply for 10,000 NT grants. Su later told a news conference that the chaos occurred after he did not make his instructions clear enough when he announced the grants on Monday, which led to competition among applicants. Quote, the government is a cohesive entity. As the leader of the team, I must assume full responsibility for the issue and reflect on my actions, he said. The policy was also not properly relayed to frontline civil servants whose workload spiked due to the applications, he said, expressing his apologies and gratitude to them. In spite of Sue's screw-up, he got some good news on Friday. President Tsai Ing-wen announced Friday that incumbent Premier Sue will continue to lead the cabinet after the inaugural ceremony for her second term on May 20th. Quote, over the past year, Premier Sue has had many outstanding achievements. I hereby announce that I have invited him to stay on as Premier so we can continue fighting for Taiwan together, Tsai said at a press conference. According to a poll by Pan Green leading Taiwan Brain Trust, the Tsai administration is on a high. The approval ratings of President Tsai Ing-wen and Premier Su Tsang have risen to 74.5% and 68.9% respectively. 
That is Tsai's best since 2016. And Sue's rating is surprisingly high for a premier who has been in office as long as he has. Traditionally, the premier is often the punching bag of the administration, taking hits on behalf of the government, which is why usually presidents go through several. They were both beat out by Health Minister Chen Shih-chung, who got 93.4% approval. Meanwhile, 40.5% of respondents have indicated their support for the ruling Democratic Progressive Party, the party's highest rating since 2018. The KMT's troubles have continued to mount. The same poll showed that the number of Taiwanese who identify with the KMT has dropped to 9.2%, the lowest the party has ever seen. Let me repeat that. 9.2% of Taiwanese identify with the KMT. Taking over as the country's second most popular political party is the Taiwan People's Party, led by Taipei City Mayor Ko Wenzhou with 11.5% support. The new power party and the Taiwan State Building Party have also gained ground. The NPC, NPP received 6.9% in support, and the TSP received 4.3%. So, not only has the KMT fallen behind the TPP, they are only 2.3% higher than the NPP. Also notable is that the combined total of NPP and TSP, both of whom support declaring a Republic of Taiwan, is 11.2% which is also higher than the pro-unification KMT. The Taiwan Supreme Administrative Court on Thursday rejected an appeal by Kaohsiung Mayor Han Guoyu to halt the planned recall vote against him. This is his second defeat. The Administrative High Court on April 17th rejected the mayor's request to suspend the recall election. KMT Chairman Johnny Chang has set up a committee to fight back against the recall. He said that the party would back it with all their strength. Meanwhile, We Care Kaohsiung, the organization behind the recall campaign, has started using digitally projected ads using the side of a building as the canvas. The city has been tearing down their physical beer bo- billboards, and this is a strategy to get around that, at least at night. According to the latest issue of America's Quarterly, the Paraguayan Senate took a vote on April 17th in a virtual session on whether to urge the president to change diplomatic recognition from Taipei to Beijing. Confirming the report, Ministry of Foreign Affairs spokeswoman Joanne O oh said seven Paraguayan senators associated with a left-leaning party caucus, Frente Guazú, petitioned on March 30th to establish formal ties with Beijing in exchange for medical supplies from China and direct access to China's market. The 45-seat Paraguayan Senate voted against the proposal 25-16 to 16 on April 17th with four absent. Taiwan's Ministry of Foreign Affairs said that the nation's only South American diplomatic partner in, in the nation's only South American diplomatic partner, shifting formal ties to Beijing is opposed by public opinion in the country. It is unclear how they came to that assessment. Taiwan's foreign minister, sorry, Canada's foreign minister, has snubbed Taiwan twice. When Canada donated medical supplies to help Canada in battling the coronavirus pandemic, Foreign Affairs Minister Francois-Philippe Champagne turned to Twitter to thank the country directly. But after the small island nation of Taiwan did the same, Champagne did not post about the donation on his Twitter account. And when pressed to thank the nation directly on Thursday, he would not say its name. Conservative MP Ed Fast asked, Quote, will the minister now do the right thing and on behalf of Canadians recognize the generosity of Taiwan and thank its government for that timely donation? Champagne said lots of countries have done the same thing and, yet again, would not name Taiwan. Fast tried the question again and Champagne repeated that he is grateful to all countries that have donated medical supplies to Canada and again did not mention Taiwan by name. Now, as a Canadian, I find this spinelessness appalling. However, 
the Canadian Trade Office here in Taiwan did post a thank you message on the office's Facebook account after the announcement of the mask shipment. As always, where there are English language articles on these topics and more, links can be found to them on our website, report.tw. Tune in tomorrow for more and be sure to hit like or subscribe. This has been brought to you by the Taiwan Report. For more content like this, become our patron at report.tw.